Welcome to the Pageantry Podcast. And today's very special Pageantry Podcast guest calling in this morning, Miss American Co-Ed 2022, Kirsten Corey. Kirsten, welcome. Good morning. Hello. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to speak to you today. Obviously, I was there as a judge for your crowning, so we have a lot to go over this morning. This will be featured in the next edition of Pageantry Magazine, as well as a podcast in the future coming up in more of its entirety. If you're ready this morning, so am I. Yes, I am. Let's get started. What was it like competing for the title of Miss American Co-Ed? It was a dream come true. I have been competing in Miss American Co-Ed since I was a young girl, about seven or eight years old. And being able to go to nationals now was truly a dream come true. And then coming home with the title was actually unimaginable. I, you can see it in my reaction in the video that I really did not believe it was happening. So it was a wonderful experience. What were your thoughts standing center stage, just waiting for your name to be called? That is the most nerve wracking experience in the world. I think you can ask any girl who's ever been through it. Your heart is truly beating out of your chest and you're hoping and praying that it's your name, but you just always have that little bit of unsure that it might not be you. So when Miss Kaylee Garris actually called my name, it was amazing. And I was just so excited. And I had the opportunity to be crowned with my young cousin who also came away with the title, Miss American Co-Ed Preteen. So that was just icing on the cake for us. We're just keeping it all in the family. Oh, yes, absolutely. It was a full family event. My aunt and mom were screaming their heads off in the audience, which is another very funny video, um, but they were over the moon as well. You, you mentioned before that you've been competing in COVID since you're seven years old. That's, yes. That, that's a long time. Is it your first national title? This is actually my first national title. I've been competing in pageants since I was four. And I started with co-ed very shortly after I began my pageant journey. And this is the first time ever winning a national title. So it definitely holds a special place in my heart. I've held multiple state titles, but never a national title. So this is truly exciting. And to come back year after year, competing for this length of time, what makes Miss American co-ed so special to you? I can remember being as young as eight years old and seeing how wonderfully the directors at Miss American Co. had treated their women. And as someone who's been through the pageant system before and competed in multiple systems, I have always been treated lovely. I've had wonderful directors, but something about the family aspect of Miss American Co. Ed was something that made me really want to be a part of it for years on end. And that's why I kept coming back and hoping to be one of Miss Michelle's girls. And, you know, I think she was just as excited as I was when I won because she's watched me grow, grow up. And it was truly an honor to be able to say that now I'm one of her national title holders. And of course, going back to the family, you're your niece. Family with Miss yes. Martin Coed, it's one big family to you. It really is. And that's such the the wonderful part of all of this is, you know, the pageant world is very small and being in it for so many years. I've been competing in pageants for 16 years, the majority of my life. And I've gotten to know such amazing women. Even the woman who introduced my name as Miss American Coed, Kaylee Garris, has been a friend of mine since I was a child. Um, and we competed in Miss American Co-Ed together as kids. So it really does come full circle for all of us. Of course, Kaylee is a former Miss Teen USA as well. She is, I know. And you should have heard me screaming my head off when she won watching in my living room. I woke my dad up from sleeping. I was so excited. And it, it truly is amazing. I watched her get crowned at Miss Connecticut Teen USA. And then watching her win nationals was absolutely amazing. I couldn't be prouder or happier for her. Going back to the competition. Do you have a favorite part of the competition that you just can't wait to get to? I do. And I think it's actually most girls' least favorite part, but I love interview. I've always been a big talker. My parents have always said that I came out of the womb like 30 years old and I've always been mature and able to speak. And I love talking to adults and grownups, even as a baby. Uh, so I really, truly love the interview process. And I got to sit down with you, which was so exciting. And I ran back to my room after interview and I always run and tell my mom everything they asked me. And my little cousin walks in the door and she goes, did you know you interviewed with the CEO of Pageantry Magazine? 
And I was like, no, I didn't. And she was like, yeah, it was the guy sitting in the middle. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And it's always fun to come back to your room and, you know, figure out who the judges are. And I mean, I've definitely been interviewed by some very cool people. So the fact that I got to interview with you was amazing too. Oh, well, I feel so blessed and honored. It was, a, <laughs> it, it was fun on my part up there. Um, normally, I'm not at the judge panel because I'm on stage I'm singing or something. So when she asked me to judge, it'd been a while. And I was like, you know, I'm really looking forward to it and to meeting young ladies like yourself and throughout all the age divisions. It, it was a wonderful experience. I look forward to doing it more in the future. So absolutely. Of course. Thank you. How do you plan to use your title as Miss American Co-Ed 2022? Well, there are so many things I want to get involved with and I've already gotten involved with. I've only had the title for about a month now, but I've already been able to help out with our veterans. Uh, I go to school at High Point University in North Carolina, and we do a massive Veterans Day celebration for the veterans in our area. Um, we held it in our arena that was just recently built. And our president, Dr. Nito Cobain, put on a lovely brunch for about 1200 veterans and their family members. And he did a speech and he even brings in a bald eagle to fly across the room, which is the antithesis of our school. I mean, they are just crazy with that stuff. It's awesome. Um, but I got to stand and greet every one of the veterans who walked in, shake their hands, thank them for their service. And that was an event that truly meant a lot to me. Um, that's something I've always wanted to do with titles, get back to our military, get back to our veterans. So I loved being a part of that. Um, and continuing with this title for the next couple months, I want to do some work with uh, students with dyslexia. I was a young child who struggled with a reading disability, dyslexia, and I actually wasn't able to read until the fifth grade, which isn't something a lot of people know about me, but I like an introduction, was able to memorize the information on a page instead of actually being able to read it. So my teachers never caught up to the fact that I wasn't reading. They just thought, oh, she knows how to read. I really was just memorizing the words. So when it came to a word I didn't know, I had no idea what to do, which is how they eventually figured out I was dyslexic and had a reading disability. And they sent me to this lovely school called Linda Mood Bell for the entire summer going into fifth grade. And I learned how to read. And you know now I'm a proficient reader. I can read with the rest of us. Um, but it was really difficult for me, especially being so young and you know feeling like I couldn't do something that everyone else seemed to be able to do with ease. So my goal is to go back to that school that I was able to be a part of and visit with those students, bring them books, share my story on, you know, it's okay to be different. It's okay to have a disability. And, you know, you just have to learn to overcome that um, and really just spend time with them and hopefully encourage them to continue on their reading journey. And you're presently in school now, yes? Yes, I am. High Point. High Point University in North Carolina. What are you studying? I am a business major. So I'm studying entrepreneurship with a double minor in sales and marketing. And what would you prefer to do as a career? I actually would love to go into medical device sales. Um, I have two parents who are doctors. And once they figured out I wasn't going to be a doctor because I'm not great with blood, they said, why don't you find something within the career field that maybe fits well with you? And from doing pageants all these years, I could talk to just about anyone. And I figured why not put that skill to use and do medical device sales. I know a lot about medicine. My dinner table was always medical talk, which some people would probably find inappropriate, but that's what we talked about at dinner. And I just learned a lot. I picked up on what my parents were talking about. And I absolutely love going out, reaching out to people, seeing what need I can fill. Um, and this job just seemed absolutely perfect for me. So that's the end goal. Who has had the biggest impact in your life? I would have to say my dance teacher, Miss Barbie. I grew up dancing from the age of two and she was a wonderful influence, but one of the things that influenced me most about her is when she got diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, she was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer and I was only about eight years old when she was going through this. So seeing how strong she was, uh, the fight that she had within her, the fact that she didn't wanna let anything stop her from being a dance teacher, being a mentor to us, truly inspired me. And because of all of that, I spent most of my time giving back to the Relay for Life. And we performed dances for them. We raised 
upwards, I would say of about $50,000 from all of the years that we spent doing this. Um, and it was just one of those things that truly warmed your heart. Being able to see her go through her journey and come out a survivor was absolutely amazing. And I truly would do anything I could to give back to people who are going through this. Um, it had a personal effect for me. My grandmother had it. Um, and then seeing my dance teacher actually go through it, uh, it's, it's unimaginable what they're put through. And the fact that she came out a survivor was amazing. And I take that strength with me every day. Well, thank you for mentioning her. Of course. Speaking of dance, do you still take dance now? Oh, when I'm home in the summer, I try to step into the studio and put the shoes back on and see what I can do. But I am not the dancer I once was. I will tell you that much. It, it, it's muscle memory to an extent. But really, if you don't keep up with it, you're going to lose it. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Do you ever compete in talent while you're at an event? Yes, absolutely. Any pageant that has a talent, I love to put my shoes back on and do a little dance. Um, I loved tap. That was my absolute favorite. My dance teacher was an exceptional tap dancer. I mean, probably one of the best she'll ever find. And she took us to tap conventions all over the country and had us learning from some of the best tap dancers there are. So tap is definitely my favorite, but... I am not as great as I used to be. I can tell you that much. It's very sad. <laughs> How has competing in pageantry helped you personally? I would say complete competing in pageantry has turned me into the person I am today. I don't think there is an aspect about me that doesn't have something to do with pageants. Even if it is just the confidence to put on a dress and heels and walk outside, that's something I learned from pageants. And I can say that confidently because I've been doing it pretty much my whole life, almost as long as I could walk. Um, and, you know, learning that there's always gonna be somebody better than you in the room. And that doesn't mean you have to put up a competition. That just means you have to be the best for yourself. And I think a lot of young girls, especially in college and in high school are faced with social media and even other beauty queens they might see and think, oh, I could never look like that or I could never do that or I could never be that. And going from being such a young age and watching so many of my either older sister queens or girls I looked up to on Miss USA or Miss America or even Miss American Co-Ed, I would just look up to them and say, I want to be that way. I want to try to be that amazing. And going through it and having to hit some bumps in the road and realizing that I can actually influence someone else or show them that you can come from this little tiny girl and turn into this beautiful young woman is it's it's rewarding. It's amazing. Um, and I really, truly wouldn't trade my experience in the pageant industry for anything. Since you brought up social media, I know it's one of the things that I could hear other judges talk about. And yes. that guy's going negative, positive or a little bit of both. Absolutely a little bit of both. I am so 50-50 on this. And I will tell you why. The first reason I ever got social media is because I have family um, overseas. My dad is born in Lebanon and a lot of my family still lives there. Um, a lot of his family is in Canada. And so having first cousins not in the United States with me, I didn't really have a great way of communicating with them or keeping them up to date on my life. So when I turned 13, my mom let me get a Facebook account and I started sharing things on there. And I was actually able to keep up with my family who was even in a different time zone. And that was just so wonderful because there's really no other way except picking up the phone and calling. And it's not really the same thing. So being able to send them pictures and videos and you know, every single one of them saw me when I won this title. They, that video got shared everywhere and they were able to see it. And it was almost like they were there with me. And I think that is something that only social media gives us. So for that, I'm grateful. Uh, on the other hand, I will say that I personally have experienced the negative effects where you look at something and you see it and you think, oh my God, that must be real. But in reality, it's not. Uh, there's editing, there's Photoshop, there's things like that. And it does, I think, affect the way young women look at themselves and look at other people. And because of that, I think there's a lot of issues that come with it. I also know a lot of people who have experienced cyberbullying through social media. And for that, I, I question it. Uh, but I do believe that it's how you use it. If you use it in a positive manner, if you post appropriate and fun and updating things on your life and have family and friends from all over who are able to see it. It's absolutely wonderful. I even keep up with girls I've competed with in pageants through social media and we get to see everything they're doing, even if we're not in the same state, which is wonderful too. And before we talked about 
you're in the glamour lifestyle industry. Yes. Obviously, you're out there in the public. And you yes. probably have some friends that you grew up with or even socialize with in college that say, oh, there's Kiersey again, going to another pageant, doing this. What do you tell them that may not understand why you do what you do and what it has done for you? I would say that my famous line with anyone who says that to me is, you wouldn't be friends with me if I hadn't done pageants because I wouldn't be the person I am today. And I say that because the glamour of pageants is often all people see. If you're not in it, if you aren't in the practice room, if you aren't seeing the blood, sweat, and tears that go into these things, you aren't understanding. It does look glamorous. And parts of it are wearing a crown and banner is wonderful. Getting dressed up in beautiful, very expensive gowns is awesome. Going to play dress up is fun. But there's actually a lot of real work that goes into this. And I think that's what people don't see. A lot of aspects of pageants is community service, is hard work, is getting your hands dirty and doing something, is the preparation. I mean, girls are dieting, they're practicing, they're in the gym, they're, there's a lot of real work that goes into this. And they're, that's the stuff that people don't see. And I think the dedication, the discipline, the responsibility of pageants has made me a responsible, disciplined, mature person. And that is why I always say to my friends who maybe don't agree with the things that I do, that there really is a lot of real work into it. And I am the person I am today because of it. So don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> what would you tell others who are considering competing at Miss American Co-Ed, regardless of age division? Well, because we have an age division for absolutely everyone, I would say go for it. I started very young, but I have a lot of friends who did not. They did their first pageant at 18, 19. Heck, start your first pageant at 50. Why not? I mean, it is a wonderful experience to any, for anyone who wants to do it. And Miss American Co-Ed is a great pageant to get started in. Like I said before, the family aspect, you will walk in whether you know these people or not and feel welcomed. You will feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. You will get to know so many wonderful souls who truly are here for the right reasons and want you to succeed, want to have you have your special moment on stage and that's just awesome. I, I've been in a lot of pageant systems, like I've said, and there is nothing like that family feeling when you walk into Miss American Co-Ed. So I would say to everyone, sign up, do it, join us. I'll be there. It'll be great. <laughs> and hopefully I'll be there again too. Yes, please come back. Is there anyone that you would like to acknowledge? Oh, there are a lot of people I'd like to acknowledge. My first pageant coach, who happens to be my Aunt Tanya, I have to thank her for teaching me everything I know about pageants. She truly is, we call her the Tadazzler because she rhinestones everything. And for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, so I have to thank her. She has supported me my entire pageant career. I have to thank Miss Natalie and Miss L who won Miss Connecticut Teen USA not too long ago. Um, they are my best of pageant friends. I met them at Miss American Co-Ed. So for Miss American Co-Ed, I am thankful that they gave me them. They are my second family. And I have to thank my actual family, my mom, my dad, my brothers. They pay for everything. They put up with me. They help me get dressed. Uh, so I can't thank them enough. My mother, does just about everything for me. And I'm not ashamed to say that at 20 years old. Without her, this wouldn't go on. So I thank all of them for the endless support that they've given me. And of course, your sorority sisters. Oh my God, I'm, I'm living in their house right now. Of course, my friends in, are absolutely amazing. I am very grateful. I have friends who are very supportive of the pageants I do, both from home and from school. So for them, I am also very thankful. Well, Kirsten, any parting thoughts? Other than come join us at Miss American Co-Ed and thank you so much, Carl and everyone at Pageantry Magazine for allowing me to do this. I just have to say thank you. And how can people find out more about Miss American Co-Ed? You can head over to our website. We have a website at MissAmericanCoEd.com. We also have a wonderful Instagram page. I have a personal Instagram page, the Miss American Co-Ed. Please go ahead and follow me um, and you can follow my journey with this rain and there are links all over to sign up so please go ahead and join us at our next local pageant in your area thank you so much for joining me today and speaking of today my very special guest has been miss american co-ed 2022 kirsten corey kirsten thank you so much 
I wish you the best throughout the year as Miss American Co-Ed. Thank you so much, Carl. It was wonderful seeing you again, and I hope to see you again soon.